PYGFX is a powerful web GPU rendering engine for Python, enabling the creation of diverse graphics applications. Its high-level abstractions simplify the process of starting with web GPU coding, while also providing developers with the flexibility to craft custom and optimized rendering solutions. With just a few lines of code, you can effortlessly generate complex 3D objects within an interactive skybox environment. Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Practical Programming with Dr. Sue. Today, let's delve into the PYEFX rendering engine. It's designed to render objects organized in a scene and offers a way to define their appearance. Here, I'll use Climb Bottle as an example object to illustrate the concept of the PYGFX engine. In the previous video, we demonstrated how a 3D object can be easily created with a minimal code snippet. Here, we'll first use a similar minimal code approach to generate the Climb Bottle. The code first imports the PYGFX rendering engine and proceeds to create a Climb Bottle object. The climb bottle geometry function is employed to generate the geometry for a climb bottle based on a set of input parameters. Simultaneously, the mesh fong material function is used to create a fong material for the mesh, giving it a green color. Subsequently, we use the GFX show function to display the climb bottle on the screen with a default window size of 640 by 480 and a default title of GLFWW GPU Canvas. Creating 3D objects with this straightforward approach only scratches the surface of the PYGFX engine's capabilities. In this video, we'll explore key building blocks for creating more intricate rendering setups, such as canvas, renderer, scene, camera, etc. The first building block we are going to discuss is the canvas. A canvas provides the surface onto which the scene should be rendered, and to use it, we can import it from the WGPUPY package. This package should be installed automatically when you are installing the PYGFX rendering engine. The WGPUPY package implements several canvases that support different GUI toolkits, including GLFW, QT, and Jupyter backends. In most examples used in this video series, we'll use the default canvas, the automatically selected GUI backend. Depending on the environment, the current WGPUPY library will choose either the GLFW, QT, or Jupyter backend. This means the WGPUPY library will automatically select an appropriate backend to create a window on your screen. This can be achieved by modifying the code from the previous example. First, import the GUI auto from the WGPU canvas, and then create a canvas object by specifying its size and title. Finally, reference it in the GFX show function. The result of executing the code is shown here. You can see that the output is similar to the previous example, but the window size and title are different. As before, the GFX show function will automatically create a canvas if we don't provide one explicitly. This works well for quick visualizations where the render can appear as a standalone window. However, if we want more fine-grained control over the target, for example, if we want to change the default window size or default title, we need to specify the canvas explicitly. The next building block is the renderer. Think of a renderer as an artist that brings all components together. It examines the objects through a camera and draws what it sees onto the surface provided by the canvas. To create a renderer, we must first create a canvas, as illustrated in the code snippet below. We then create a renderer object with the canvas as input. Additionally, we need to reference the renderer in the GFX show function. It is worth noting that the output will remain the same even without explicitly referencing the renderer in the GFX show function. This is because the show function will create a renderer if we don't provide one. For many applications, that is acceptable. However, if you want to address more advanced challenges, such as controlling the precise process of how objects appear to overlay each other, we may need to create the renderer explicitly. 
for most examples used in this video series. Knowing that the renderer exists and understanding its function is sufficient. We can delve deeper into it later when it becomes relevant. The third building block is the scene. In PYGFX, a scene represents the world to be rendered. To visualize objects in a scene, we need to define at least three components, object with visual properties, a light source, and a camera for viewing the scene. Once these components are defined, we can seamlessly add them to the scene and initiate the rendering process. Let's explore how this works with an example. We start by importing the PYGFX engine and then define an empty scene without any lights or objects. Next, we add two light sources to the scene. One is the ambient light, providing environmental illumination, and another for directional light, offering object illumination. Subsequently, we create a perspective camera by specifying the corresponding field of view, aspect ratio, and location. Afterward, we need to introduce an object to focus on, as illustrated in the following code. Notably, creating an object is a bit more intricate than adding lights and cameras because the object involves both geometry, which dictates the object's structure, and a material, which determines its appearance. Finally, we need to reference both the scene and camera in the GFX show function. With these elements in place, we're ready to visualize the object using the GFX show function, and the result will be displayed on the screen. It is worth noting that, in contrast to the previous examples where we passed the object to the GFX show function, we are now passing the scene to the show function. Consequently, the resulting display appears slightly different. This difference arises because a complete scene can be rendered as is, whereas an object cannot. When passing an object to the GFX show function, the function creates a new scene, adds the missing lights, a camera, and a background, places the object into the scene, and then renders the result. On the other hand, when passing a scene to the show function, it utilizes the input as is, allowing you to see precisely what you've created. Next, we'll discuss animation. We briefly touched on this topic in the previous video, where we continuously rotated a 3D torus knot object using animation. Here, we'll provide more details about animation in the PYDFX engine. Animation is achieved through a backends event loop, allowing you to specify callbacks that execute periodically. For convenience, the GFX show function exposes two callbacks, before render and after render. The before render callback indicates it is executed before a new render, while the after render callback indicates it is executed afterward. To animate a scene, simply pass the animation function to these callbacks. Let's start again with the minimal code example. This code creates a 3D cube with a steel blue color. To animate the cube's rotation, we first import the Python Linear Algebra Utility module and then define a function named Animate. Inside this function, we create a rotation from a quaternion based on Euler angles and assign it to the object's rotation property. Finally, we set the displays before render callback to this animate function. Running this code generates a 3D cube object with continuous rotation. As mentioned previously, we can also use the after render callback to achieve similar animation. In the following, we would like to briefly discuss cameras in the PYGFX engine. This engine features two main cameras of interest. The first one is the perspective camera, designed for visualizing 3D objects. It creates depth and size variations, simulating how objects appear in the real world, where distant objects are smaller. This provides a more realistic visual effect. The second camera is the orthographic camera, rendering objects with no depth perception, making all objects appear the same size regardless of distance. Let's demonstrate how to instantiate these cameras by modifying the animation example directly. First, we create a perspective camera manually with this code snippet, where we instantiate the camera by specifying its field of view and aspect ratio. Subsequently, we define the camera's location and look at direction. Finally, we need to reference this camera in the GFX show function. Running this code produces a standard perspective 3D cube on your screen. 
Now, we can change the camera to an orthographic camera by specifying its width and height parameters. This code generates an orthographic 3D cube where each side has equal length. This cube looks less realistic because it lacks a perspective view. Okay, finally, we'll showcase the Klein bottle object in cube map environments, as we did for the Taurus knot in the previous video. In that video, we used the default cube mapping image from the ImageIO library. In this example, we'll utilize local cube mapping files to create a different skybox environment. A cube map is a collection of six square textures that represent reflections on an environment. These six squares form the faces of an imaginary cube surrounding an object. Each face represents a view along the directions of the world axis. Up, down, left, right, forward, and back. There are several commonly used cube map layouts, including vertical cross layout, horizontal cross layout, row layout, and column arrangements of cube map faces. In this example, we'll use the column layout. Here is a sample cube map made of six images of the city. To use this custom cube map, we need to modify the create cube map function in the helper file located in the common folder. First, we need add an image file name argument to this function. When it is set to default, we'll use the cube map from the ImageIO library. If it is set to city, we'll use the local file called city.jpg file located in the assets folder. This way, you can add your own cube map files to be used use your skybox environments. The code in the showcase.py file in the src slash video 02 folder is listed here, creates a metal like climb bottle on the streets of a city as shown on the screen. We can also easily create a glass-like climb bottle by setting the material's ENV mapping mode property to cube refraction. Of course, you can use different skybox environments by simply changing the cube map image file. Here show some examples. 